So in this particular review, I'm going to cover the final unit of the semester, which is about prokaryotes. To start off with, I just want to break down this word into its prefix and root meaning. Pro prefix translates to before. And karyote is actually Greek. The word kernel, think of a kernel or something, it's at the center. And that actually represents the nucleus. So the cells we would look at in this particular unit are cells that do not contain membrane-bound organelles or a nucleus. And specifically, when people think of prokaryotes, they primarily think about bacteria. So what I want to do first is actually introduce you to the idea of what a bacterium looks like. It's going to be a very general idea. Then we're going to talk about two different ways that you can go about actually identifying these particular cells based upon uh, either their morphology, which is their shape, or particular structures on the outside of these cells. So let me just start by drawing bacterium. Okay, and then I'll draw a couple of structures on the inside. So the outermost structure on this particular bacterium is called a cell wall. Inside that, you're going to have a plasma membrane. This purple mass here is actually bacterial chromosome, so that's all of the DNA. Notice it's not in a nucleus, it is simply kind of at the center of the cell, but there's nothing separating it from everything else inside the cell like we see in eukaryotic organisms. Now since we have a chromosome which is composed of DNA, that means we're going to need to transcribe mRNA off of that DNA and then translate that mRNA into a, an amino acid message that will compose a polypeptide. So to translate or perform translation requires one organelle, and that is the ribosome. Now remember I said that prokaryotes do not contain membrane-bound organelles. Ribosomes are not membrane-bound. They're composed primarily out of protein and ribosomal RNA. Finally, these red circles are referred to as plasmids. These are circular pieces of nucleic acids that can be uh, acquired by the cell from its surrounding environment or from other cells. And these can encode a variety of genes, all of which can potentially be expressed in this cell. These plasmids are the ways in which many bacteria actually acquire drug resistance or antibiotic resistance. Okay, so they can take up this genetic material from their surrounding environment, and if it contains a gene for drug resistance, the bacterium in theory could begin expressing that gene. All right, so that's the general idea of these particular cells. Now I want to actually start talking about the ways in which we can identify different types of bacteria. <coughs> 